So this ESTIC 2025 was basically to bring together uh, science, technology, innovation across domains and across private and public sector, uh, organized of course by 12 departments of uh, the government. Uh, I participated in the plenary panel which really talked about uh, both the opportunities and challenges for Indian science and R&D today. Uh, we spoke about the need for breaking silos for partnerships across domains. I also highlighted that we need cross-boundary national and international partnerships, uh, both, particularly to work on areas of common uh, interest to the region or to the whole world. You know, we have need solutions for climate change and heat. We need solutions for nutrition security. The Prime Minister actually mentioned one of the national priorities being national, nutritional security for the country. While we have achieved food security, we still need to work on that. So I think it's clear that what we have, all the elements in India, we have many, many good scientific institutions, in the, both in the NGO, the private and the public sector. We have many educational institutions around the country, especially in second and third tier cities, where young people are aspiring to do more and have brilliant ideas. They just need the platform. And we have a large, thriving private and manufacturing sector. How do we bring these together to enable science for societal development? I think that really is the challenge. And I hope that after this conference, there would be enough ideas. One of the ideas I gave was that uh, all scientists should consider themselves as diplomats, because science diplomacy can also help to break barriers. You may be geopolitically not aligned, but you can, science can bring you together and you can share technologies for public good. India has a very important role to play in bridging between the global north and the global south. Yes, so the R&D sector has been growing, um, but as a percentage of GDP, our investment in R&D still remains to be lower than you know, other countries of our size. And it's clear that uh, today, countries that are leading globally, geopolitically, or economically are those that have built the foundation on science. So countries that have invested in science are the only ones that can actually become totally uh, uh, you know, global leaders.